Hey guys, how's it going? Since this will literally be my last video of 2022, I thought why not talk to you guys about how much I actually earned from YouTube this year. I hope that this video will be useful for anybody looking into starting a YouTube channel, software engineering or otherwise, or anybody who's just curious about the income you can possibly make by doing YouTube uh, part-time as a side hustle or just as a hobby. That being said, I do realize that we're in the middle of a potential recession and money and finance may be a sensitive topic for some of you. I do genuinely believe in transparency and I think it's okay and in fact a good practice to talk about money and finances as long as it's done respectfully. And to that end, this video is not meant to be a flex. If anything, my goal is to motivate you to take that next step uh, if you've always been wondering about starting a YouTube channel. But regardless, if money or finance is a sensitive topic for you, please consider this your trigger warning. Okay, so as many of you know, I started my channel back in May of 2020. And since I've never really made a video about talking about my YouTube finances, in this video, I'm gonna briefly talk about how much I made back in 2020 and in 2021 before moving on to this year, which is my best year so far. I think it's important to talk about the previous years as it sets some context uh, into the whole YouTube income thing because, spoiler alert, uh, you will most likely be in the negative for the first year or so before you see a single positive dollar in your balances. While at it, I'll also give you a quick categorization of what sorts of income and expenses you have to deal with when running a YouTube channel. All right, with that said, let's get started. So is running a YouTube channel free? The short answer, no. The actual cost depends on what sort of channel you want to start and the level of quality you want in your production. Uh, but in general, it can cost you anywhere from a couple of hundred of dollars um, per year to thousands of dollars per year. So let's quickly look at what those expenses can be. The first one is equipment. And if you don't already have microphones, cameras, lights, and all that kind of stuff, this will also likely be your largest expense. Of course, you can start just by using your phone and then go from there, or you can buy multiple top-end 4K cameras or anything in between. But regardless of your choice, expect some investment in this area. Also, all that footage needs to be edited somewhere, and the more compressed the video from your camera, the harder it is for your computer to edit. So a decent laptop or a desktop is also required to edit all that footage. But these are generally just one-time expenses which will probably occur in your first year and then don't have to see them after that. The second expense category is all your subscriptions. This will likely be your biggest recurring expense. Once again, how many subscriptions you have depends on the scope of your channel, but at the very least, you will need two. One for copyright-free music and the other one for copyright-free video footage. I personally use Epidemic Sound for music and Storyblocks for uh, stock footage. And those run me about $500 per year, uh, just to give you an idea. And then there's also the audio and video editing software. You could go the one-time payment route and get Apple's Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve, or pay monthly and go the Adobe route and get the whole editing bundle that includes products like Premiere, Photoshop, Lightroom, and After Effects. Either way, expect some cost there because you will not be running a YouTube channel with iMovie or Windows Movie Editor. And then there are legal costs. This may not be a big deal in your first year because most likely you won't have any income in your first year, but at least once you start earning from YouTube or any side gig for that matter, it's always a good idea to have a separate LLC to protect your personal assets. In that case, setting up a business, getting legal representations, uh, filling up paperwork, and all that has some yearly costs associated with it, which we will cover more in detail when I talk about my actual income and expenses later in this video. Well, those are all the major expense categories. Now let's quickly look at the different ways you can actually earn money by running a YouTube channel. The first source of income is Google's AdSense. This is basically the money you earn uh, from ads shown in your videos. AdSense earnings varies widely from person to person and even video to video. 
basically advertisers bid to place their ads on videos that pertain to a certain category or demographic. And when your videos fall within that space, YouTube displays the ads and you get a portion of that ad revenue. What amount you actually get is determined by a metric called CPM or cost per meal. Basically, this is the amount you earn every 1000 views your videos get. This is a very dynamic number and changes quite frequently and depends on your viewer demographic, video topic, and many things like that. So the next source of income is affiliate sales. These are generally the links that YouTubers share that give them a small kickback. Uh, for the audience, following these links does not cost anything extra and in many cases even gives them a small discount. Uh, for my channel, this is usually books that I recommend. So if you end up buying those books, I generally get anywhere from 1% to 3% from that sale. In addition, there are also partnership-based affiliate income. Uh, for example, I partnered with LeetCode earlier this year because it's a platform that is very relevant to this channel. Uh, that enabled me to share a link to you guys that gave you 15% off the annual subscription. Description. And in return, I got a small kickback. You get the idea. The next source of income is sponsorship. You've all seen the sponsored sections on YouTube videos and it often gets a lot of hate from viewers. But the honest fact is that if there were no sponsorships, majority of YouTube channels wouldn't exist. You barely make any income from AdSense alone. So affiliate sales and sponsorships is what keeps the channels afloat. Of course, there is a social responsibility for influencers to choose high quality sponsors. And I do my best to always pick ones that my audience will find useful. Well, the next and final source of income on YouTube is merchandise. This can be branded accessories or even things like digital assets, courses, tutorials, etc., that are paid. Um, I have some merch. Visit engineeringwithutsav.com slash store if you want to check them out. But in my case, I barely make any income from merch probably because I'm a horrible salesman and I don't even talk about them in most of my videos. Well, that's about it for income. Um, this is obviously not an exhaustive list of income sources because depending on the channel, you may have other sources like subscriptions, Patreon, Super Chats, etc. But I don't have any of those so far, so I'm going to skip past them. All right. So now let's move on to looking at how much I actually earn from YouTube. Let's briefly look at 2020 and then 2021 and then we'll get to 2022. Let's start with my expenses for 2020, which is the year I started this channel. For equipment, I bought a mirrorless camera, namely Canon EOS R and a shotgun microphone to record my videos and a pair of LED lights to light up the room. That basically cost me about $3,000 and that was it for my equipment. For subscriptions, I paid $300 for the yearly subscription of Storyblocks. Epidemic Sound was about $115 for the seven or so months. Um, and then Creative Suite from Adobe was about $420. That's a total of about $835 in subscriptions. I didn't establish the YouTube side of things as a separate business in 2020, so there was no cost there. So my total YouTube related expenses for 2020 was $3,835. And as far as income goes, like I mentioned before, I started my YouTube channel in May 2020 and I wasn't even eligible to earn revenue until about September 2020. From September through December, I made a total of $1,372 from ad revenue. I had no affiliate sales because one, I didn't know those things existed. And even if I had put some links uh, towards the end of 2020, I didn't have enough viewership. So not many people were clicking those links anyways. So let's say that's $0 in affiliate sales. Same with sponsorships. I was so new that no one really reached out to me for sponsorships. So that's a zero as well. And finally, uh, I also had no merch offerings in 2020 and that's a zero as well. So my total YouTube income in 2020 was $1,372. Subtract the expenses from that and it's a total loss of about $2,463. Uh, here's another way to look at it. I made a total of 16 videos in 2020 and each video on average takes me about 10 hours to make. Some take longer, some are slightly faster, but that's about the average. So I was basically losing about $15 for every hour I spent on YouTube in 2020. All right, let's move on to 2021. I didn't really buy any equipment in 2021 except for upgrading my old desktop to the M1 Max MacBook Pro uh, for better video editing performance. Uh, that cost me about $3,500. For subscriptions, I paid a total of $1,572, which includes copyright free music and videos, uh, video editing software, as well as the hosting of my website. 
In 2021, I created an official LLC for YouTube, so that cost me about $600. So my total expenses for 2021 was about $5,072. Um, so let's talk about income now. For ad revenue, I made a total of $10,632. From affiliate sales uh, via links or from partnerships, I made a total of $13,207. And in 2021, I had sponsors as well for some of my videos, um, out of which I made a total of $10,000. And I also had merch in 2021, and that earned me about $542 uh, from the total sales. As I told you, I'm not very good at sales. In any case, my total income for 2021 after subtracting my expenses was $29,309. And that year I made uh, 37 videos, so about 370 hours spent on YouTube. So basically my hourly rate for 2021 was about $80 an hour before taxes. And that brings us to 2022, my best year yet on YouTube. But before we dive into 2022, I want to briefly talk about today's video sponsor, Aura. Aura is an all-in-one intelligent online safety solution for your entire family that is simple to understand and easy to use. In 2022, we literally do almost everything online. Yet a lot of us take online safety very lightly. Do you even know that 33% of the people in US have experienced identity theft? In 2020 alone, identity theft cost people in the US, $56 billion. I run this YouTube channel as a single owner business and I frequently get phishing emails from random people asking me to sign a new sponsorship contract or to reschedule delivery for a missed shipment. And because I also have a full-time job and a very busy schedule without adequate protection, it's all too easy for me to fall prey to one of these fraudulent attempts and end up as one of the 2.2 million fraud reports that the FTC hands out each year. But even if you're careful about protecting your identity online, the issue is that you have to deal with so many different facets of it. You have to figure out account monitoring, set up antivirus and malware protection, make sure that you use a VPN in public areas, and even remember to set strong passwords that aren't easy to crack. Keeping up with all this can be cumbersome and the costs for each of those apps and services can add up quickly. Aura sets itself apart by being a one-shop stop that provides financial fraud protection identity theft protection, parental controls, as well as device security through antivirus and malware protection, password manager, and a VPN, all through one single plan. On top of that, all Aura plans come with 24-7 customer support, 365 days a year, and $1 million of ID theft insurance. So to get started with your identity protection with Aura and to learn more about the excellent services they provide, visit aura.com slash utsav, which will also give you a free 14 day trial. The link will also be in the description below. Huge thanks to Aura for sponsoring this video. Okay, so let's start with my expenses for 2022. So this year, I decided to make some upgrades to improve my production quality and also to speed up the time it takes me to produce each video. This meant setting up multiple cameras and having multiple ready to shoot studio areas where I can simply press a button and I'm ready to go. The major expenses uh, on the equipment side of things were two additional mirrorless cameras, namely the Canon R6 and R5, a few extra lenses, as well as some additional microphones and lighting. And the total for all that was $13,822. For subscriptions, in addition to the usual suspects, I moved my merchandise over to my own website instead of a third-party vendor. So that increased my website hosting costs as that requires an upgraded commerce platform. Plan. Um, in addition to that, I also invested in some productivity apps, namely Superhuman for emails, which is a steep 30 bucks a month, but the amount of time it saves me when answering the sheer amount of emails I get every day, it's totally worth it. And finally, since I have a business now, I need to do my own bookkeeping for which I use QuickBooks and that costs some money as well. In any case, the total I spent on subscriptions in 2022 is about $2,200. For legal fees and other business-related charges, I spent about $400. So my total expenses for 2022 was $16,422. So now let's look at my income. From AdSense, I made a total of $11,580. 
From affiliate sales and partnerships, I made a total of $42,952. This was my largest income category, and for any aspiring YouTubers, this is why you would have to be picky about your affiliate partnerships. Pick good partners and add genuine value to your audience. Partnering with high quality and respected companies and providing big discounts on their platforms is a great way to add value to your viewers. When you provide genuine value, you also get genuine returns. This number is indicative of that. From video sponsorships, I made about $25,000 this year. Just like with partnerships, I'm extremely picky with my sponsors. I only pick sponsors that I think are of top quality and I can endorse and that also provide value to my audience. I only make about one or two videos a month, so sponsorship spots are extremely limited on my channel. And even with that, I let a bunch of videos go unsponsored if I don't find the right fit. I could easily raise this number by a big margin by farming 4 to 10 videos a month and taking on any sponsor that reaches out to me. But that has never been my philosophy and I'm going to continue to be very selective about who I pick, even though that may hurt my bottom dollar. Anyway, moving on to merchandise, the story is still grim. Only about $610 in 2022. Like I said, I'm horrible at selling my own stuff. So guys, if you want to support this channel, go buy some merchandise. With all that, my total income from YouTube for 2022 is $80,142. If you subtract the expenses, that's about $63,720. Including this video, I made 27 videos in 2022. The average time I spend on each video went down from 10 hours to 8 hours due to the investment I made into productivity. So that means I spent a total of 216 hours on YouTube this year. At that rate, after my expenses, my hourly rate for YouTube is close to $300 an hour. So aside from the emotional joy YouTube brings from helping the community, has it been financially worth it? Absolutely. Um, since starting YouTube about two and a half years ago, I've earned about $90,500 in approximately 746 hours. If I normalize that to a full-time job, which is about 2,080 hours, my yearly YouTube income would be around $250,000 before taxes. That's a very good return on investment in my opinion. Well, hopefully this was somewhat useful. Um, I have some really cool ideas for 2023 that will add even more value for you guys. Um, in the end, it's not about the exact amount of dollars you earn. It's a delicate balance between maximizing the output of the effort you put in, in terms of impact and the value it provides to the people who follow and look up to you, but also giving you meaningful emotional and financial returns to make it feasible for you to continue to invest your time towards it. I have been very fortunate that this channel is financially sustainable, but it has never been my primary goal. For me, it's always been about quality over quantity. And in fact, if you notice, the number of videos I produced in 2022 went down by 10 compared to 2021, even though the potential for me to earn money was far greater in 2022. Because the first and foremost goal of this channel is to always produce high quality content and provide the best value possible to you guys. Everything else is secondary. Well. Happy holidays and a very happy new year to all you guys. Um, huge gratitude to every single one of you that continue to love and support this channel. Party responsibly and be good to one another. I'll see you in 2023. Cheers.